I'm gonna walk you through how to thread and wind a bobbin on the Singer Heavy Duty 4411 sewing machine. So here's the trick. If you don't do the threading correctly, you don't do the bobbin correctly, you don't have the right needle in, you don't have the right thread in, this machine will not work. So I'm gonna give you tips along the way to be successful. When you master the threading, the bobbin, the needles, trust me, your sewing projects are gonna be so much more enjoyable. So take your time, Learn these skills correctly and it will treat you right. So number one, feed it good thread. There's different qualities of thread out there. If you don't pay a lot for thread, you're getting kind of low quality thread. The more you pay for thread, the better it is. So that is something to keep in mind. If it's thread from grandma's old sewing box, let's not use it. Trust me, 30, 40 year old thread is probably not the best thread to put through your brand new sewing machine. So treat yourself good quality thread, check with your local soy machine store. If they sell soy machines, they're gonna sell good thread. So treat yourself some basic colors, white, black, neutrals, like creams and grays are great. Some denim colors, red is something people always use, and then have some fun with maybe some fun colors and variegated colors. So since this thread is actually considered a cross wound thread, see the little X's on the spool? This thread comes off best if it is put on the horizontal spool pin. So as I put it on here, the thread will come off the end, and since it is a little larger spool itself, I'm gonna put on the large spool cap. Make sure you push it all the way on. Don't leave a gap in between here. Trust me, that thread will find that gap and then get tight and that breaks the needle and you think, oh my gosh, this machine's awful. But no, you just didn't do it right up top here. Now, if you have a thread that does not have the little X's and it has more thread that just lays next to each other, we call that stacked thread. By the way, that thread will go better, come off the spool smoother, if it goes on the vertical spool pin. You put that on, if you wanna put the little felt pad on, and then your thread is going to sit like this and spin off this way. So determine which thread that you actually have. Pick the right vertical or horizontal spool pin. Horizontal only, we use spool caps. And there is another small spool cap with this machine, so smaller ends require smaller spool caps, that's awesome. But definitely make the right choice. Next, you have bobbins that are specific for this machine. So this is not the time to take the bobbins from that old, old machine you had or finally got rid of and say they're gonna work here. Now, they might be the same, but trust me, make sure that if they aren't identical, that we are not using the wrong bobbins. So there's four bobbins that come with the machine. Three were in the packet that we opened up from the accessory bag out of the front part here, and one was actually in the machine when we opened it brand new from the box. These are considered class 15 bobbins. They are easy to find. There's pla class 15 plastic ones, which is for this machine, and there's metal ones, which are not for this machine. So metal ones are heavier. This machine is set up for the lighter weight. There's nothing wrong with a plastic bobbin. It's just going to hold our thread and then it spins. So just make sure you have the right one. Next, when we're threading for a bobbin, we are going to be following the little numbers and coming over to this little pre-tensioner. So right now, every spool, whether it's horizontal or vertical, is going to come under the little guide next to the number one. They're also all gonna go under the guide next to number two. Then for the bobbin, which we're gonna wind right here, we're going to come underneath this pretensioner. There's a little spring to it, so make sure you get it in and underneath and follow the little picture that we come around clockwise and cross back over itself. Now, if you've ever wound a bobbin and it's kind of like, the thread is on the bobbin, but it's very fluffy and, 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 and squishy. You did not get it under this little kind of resistance area. The pretensioner is key. Next, take your thread, just like the picture shows you here, and find one of the holes and thread the thread up through one of the holes there from the inside out. So inside out, and then the bobbin is going to get pushed down on the bobbin winder. Take all that slack out and push the bobbin to the right, and now it's ready to wind. I like to just hold my thread in my fingers straight up, and then go ahead and step on the foot control. When you do, it will start to spin. When you're spinning, go ahead and wind it. You're gonna notice how fast this machine goes. Wow, that's great. 
you can break it. It will probably break off. If you break off and you still have a little kind of nub of thread, make sure you clip it off. I'm gonna just stop right here and then just use scissors to cut it so there's no little extra thread. And go ahead and wind yourself a nice full bobbin. It's gonna stop when it's done. So we'll just let it go as full as it goes. You'll see that it kind of stops winding when it's full. Now let me show you, this is full-ish, but if you want it a little fuller, tell you the truth, the, just take a, um, the proper tool and make this little stopper come slightly further away from the bobbin and it will fill up a little bit further. That's one thing they don't really like test at the factory because it's such a fine tune. They got it close, but on this machine, I would be uh, one to take and just move that little white stopper so it'll fill a little further. Take your scissors, uh, cut your thread. Now, before I take it off here, let me show you a great little trick. We're, if you've just wound a bobbin, it's going into the bobbin area next. We're putting it into the bobbin case. There is a right and wrong way for a bobbin to actually be placed into the machine. It's a little picture to remind you which way that is. The thread needs to actually come off the bobbin off on the left side, but look right here. It's the exact same way that it wound. So if you take this bobbin, lift it straight up, the thread is on the left. So straight up and drop it in. Again, let's take a look at the little picture. It's showing the thread needing to come down here about six o'clock. And there is a tension area the bobbin thread needs to be guided into. So right here about six o'clock, you're gonna let the thread drop in there and then put your finger on the bobbin and then pull to the left. And there's just like between six and 7.30, the bobbin thread is in the tension. That's it, that's all you need to do. Now I'm gonna leave the door off for a second until I get the machine threaded. Once the machine is threaded, I'm gonna show you how to bring this bobbin thread up so both the threads are on the top of the machine when we take our first stitch. Next, the pre-tensioner is only for the bobbin. So make sure you undo that for when you're ready to sew. Now we're gonna follow it by the numbers. We've left it in number one, we're behind number two, but before we go down the front of the machine where number three is, make sure your presser foot is up. If the presser foot is down, there's an area in here that have two discs, and those are the tension discs. They're closed when the foot is down, but open when the foot is up. So we always want our students to thread with your presser foot up. Otherwise, it doesn't get in where it needs to go. Have you ever been sewing on fabric and you flip it over and you got those big hairy loops on the back? It's because it's not in the top tension. When it's on the back, people always think it's a bobbin problem and it's not. It's an operator error problem because you didn't thread it correctly. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here. When you take your thread down this area, it disappears. You're gonna come up at four and then right here. So I'm coming up and I'm gonna go in on the right and down on the left for number five. But right here, if you take your thread and go like this and you kind of floss that back and forth, I left my presser foot down, it was really tight. So lift the presser foot up, floss that thread all the way in there. Good, and then you know your thread gets where it needs to go. Take your thread, come in on the right and down on the left. Now, if you don't see this right here, turn your hand wheel until it does come up to its highest position because all you're gonna do is just let it drop into the take-up lever. Next, there's a guide right at the edge of the housing, so just go behind there. There's another guide at the top of the needle. Make sure the thread goes behind that one as well. Next, you're gonna thread the needle. So I usually just clip the thread at a slight angle. If you need a little bit more room, now's the time you can lower that presser foot and then thread the needle yourself. If that's hard for you, there are handheld needle threaders you might take a look at. So next, next we wanna bring the bobbin thread up so it is where it should be when we start to sew. You're gonna reach over to the hand wheel, you're gonna turn it towards you and take one full stitch. One full stitch is gonna bring the needle up, but you need to make sure the take-up lever comes all the way to the highest position. I'll say that a couple times throughout our videos. If this start 
starts and stops at the highest position. It will solve like 80% of people's sewing problems. I was holding on to the thread that came out of the needle when I turned the hand wheel, and now there's a little loop of thread. That's the bobbin thread. So get a hold of it, and then take both the threads down the center of the foot, and you are ready to sew. Put the bobbin cover over the bobbin area, and let's take some fabric. Now, when I take fabric, you want to sew on two layers. So instead of just sewing like this, take the fabric, fold it in half. You'll see me doing that all the time here. We're going to lower the presser foot down, reach behind the machine, and get ready to sew. Your dial should be set for number four for tension, number the needle position where the needle's right in the center, the stitch width for a straight stitch should be zero because there's no width, the needle's in the center. Length, let's start at two and a half, and then let's make sure we're on a straight stitch on the stitch selection dial, and go ahead and sew. If you've threaded it correctly, it will look good. If you want to secure your stitches at the end, hold the reverse button down for a couple stitches back and forward. Now let's take a look at this. Wherever the machine stops, I want you to look for that take-up lever. He's almost there, but sometimes it's more like the needle's down in the fabric. Turn your hand wheel towards you until this comes to the highest point take and lift up your presser foot. Now there is a little uh, cutter on the side of the machine and so you can take your threads from the front to the back or from the back to the front, whichever way works best for you. So what we're looking for is that the stitch looks the same on the front as it does on the back and it is perfect. So we are set. The reason we don't have, to, we see the perfect stitch is because we also have the same weight of thread in our needle as we do in our bobbin. So if something did not go right, so whether it's threading, maybe we didn't have the right needle for the thread we picked or the right needle for the fabric we're sewing on. So keep in mind there's other things to double check if things are not coming out correctly, but I think you're on your way. Let's get into some of these other fabulous stitches that you can do, and also for taking care of the Singer Heavy Duty 4411 sewing machine.